no more nights, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again. That's the promise of our dear Lord. And thank you very much, Elder uh, Chris, for that uh, wonderful music that you have given to us. And now, let us hear it from our uh, first elder, Elder Don. May you be uh, used by the Holy Spirit to comfort the family that are grieving right now. Go ahead, please. Good evening, family. I call you family because we are all one. We are all one in Christ. In behalf of our beloved pastor, Emmanuel Hardiniano, who is the pastor of the three churches here in New Jersey, we would like to extend our deepest sympathy for the passing away of our loved one. It's quite a challenge at this time for me to speak before you because for many of you, perhaps this is the first time that we see each other in, at this forum. And we don't know if there will be another time that we're going to see each other again. So it becomes incumbent upon me to share with you the thing that I know many amongst us have, the one that gives us eternal hope. We realize that at this moment, we are all grieving in pain for the passing away of our loved one. Yet there is hope. And that hope is the one that we need at this very moment right now. Death is our reality, and nobody is exempt. As soon as we are born in this world, we look forward to the time. It is a grim reality. One day we will have to face it. One day is going to be our time. It's going to be that day. But it should not be that way, brothers and sisters. And with that, allow me to once again invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I, as I share the word with you, please pray for me because I am a sinner. And I'm not worthy to speak before you. If there's one who's worthy, it should be one who knows God. Yet I know that the Holy Spirit will be in our midst to speak before you the words that is fitting and all the words that we need to hear. Let's pray. Our great God and loving Father, with thanksgiving and humility in our hearts, we come boldly before thy throne of grace. We invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, who comforts us in this, our moment of grief and sorrow. We thank you, dear Lord, that you are very much interested in our affairs and that you are in the midst of us and that your Holy Spirit will speak before us words that we need at this very, very moment to comfort us and to relieve us of the pains that we are going through, that we can look forward to that hope and that hope we can only find in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, Father, be with each and every one tonight, especially those who are closest to the loved one who just passed away. This is not the end, Lord. 
you did not design this to be so because when we were created in Adam, when you created us, you created us according to your image. And that image is an image that should not die. So, Father, me, your truth comes to us crystal clear so that at the end we can know that we have met you through the words that were spoken. And then we can look forward to that peace which you alone can give. The peace which the saints call a peace that surpasses all knowledge and understanding. May this find its place in everyone's heart tonight to stay forever until Jesus comes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So brothers and sisters, family, Brother Epi is a very close friend of ours. Many times, he has been our speaker in many of the uh, gospel presentations. And it's through him that the Lord has presented to us the gospel in a clear and crystal manner. Our sister Ami is now resting. It's a sleep, as the Bible calls it. A sleep that is so profound that even the strongest earthquake would not wake her up. Yet, brothers and sisters, family, friends, this message that is fitting for us tonight is the message that the Lord has prepared for us to the Holy Spirit. Christ, who is very much acquainted with all that we are going through, came down into this world, emptied heaven, and left his glory in the heavenly kingdom and took us upon himself for the suffering of death. Christ, who is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters, who through his birth, his miraculous birth, became one with us because he knew and he still knows our very problem. And our problem is death. And no one can escape it. The scripture is very clear. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And that flesh and blood he took upon himself in human form, like you and me. And that flesh and blood he surrendered to the cross of Calvary. When he became flesh and blood, brothers and sisters, God became man. And I believe all of us know what Emmanuel means. Emmanuel means God with us. Emmanuel, God with us, it is Jesus Christ who became the Son of Man. The Son of God became the Son of Man. And he found his dwelling amongst us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So as soon as you're born in this world, Jesus Christ is not ashamed to call you brother or sister. The scripture also is very clear. That because Jesus Christ became flesh and blood, somewhere in the scripture it says, For in us must then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might release them who through their lifetime are subject to fear of death. 
we are all in bondage of that fear, the fear of death. And we were released from that death through Jesus Christ. So, Lord, brothers and sisters, through Jesus Christ's death, humanity died in him. So that we look forward to that day that when after three days Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, he was resurrected by the glory of the Father. At the cross, he said, it is finished. What was finished? Our redemption was finished. It was full and complete, brothers and sisters. And even before he said it is finished, he said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Sometimes we think we know. But Jesus Christ knew every one of us. Jesus Christ knew what was inside of man. He was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. And so the flesh and blood which he assumed that his incarnation, he surrendered to the cross of Calvary. And there that humanity he executed. And when he died, it was a death that we deserve. Yet because he loved us so much, he did not want us to suffer that death. And what was the proof that he was victorious when he said it is finished? His glorious resurrection. He looked forward to that day, brothers and sisters. When he comes to take home those who believe in him. This mortal and corruptible flesh will put on the same glorified body that Jesus Christ was resurrected with after three days. He longs to impart to each and every one of us that body which will never die. The question we have to ask ourselves is that, are we willing to accept this truth that Jesus Christ realized for each and every one of us? Death is not supposed to be our end. We look forward to that hope. That's why Jesus Christ is calling each and every one of us he said, let not your hearts be troubled. Today we are living in the most difficult times of Earth's history. Already hundreds of thousands have died of COVID. And our loved ones are dying. We have now death in the family. Yet Jesus Christ knows what all of us are going through. He alone suffered what the scripture says, eternal death. So brothers and sisters, the invitation he is giving right now, he spoke when he was on earth. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Brothers and sisters, that's the invitation. It's for you and for me. God loves us so much that he spared not his only son, Jesus Christ, but delivered him up for us all. Let's look unto Jesus. Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised that sin. And is now sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Interceding for you and me. He does not want any of us 
to live a life that's temporary. The life that we have now is temporary. One day, this life will just have to end. But this, God did not intend for us to live. He intends for us to live with Him all through the ages of eternity. We realize that life is full of challenges. We suffer. We go through pains, hardships. And so again, he invites, come to me, all of you who are tired and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am humble and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So brothers and sisters, it is for all of us that Jesus Christ came into this world. God so loved the world, you and me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came for you and me, brothers and sisters. The scripture is very clear. John 1, 11 says, He came into his own, but his own received them, him not. But they that received them, he gave power to become children of God, even them that believe in his name. This is the same message that our beloved elder Epi, whom we love so much is preaching is preaching so that man who does not have hope may find hope man who is going through pains challenges trials temptations and hardships may find jesus and look forward to that day when Finally, all these things may just come to pass so that the song that was sung by Elder Chris, No More Nights, will be a glaring reality for each and every one of us. So the very strong admonition of the scriptures is not just for anybody, it's for everyone. God is not slack in his promise as others consider his luckness. He is not willing that any should perish. Any of us should perish, but all should come to repentance. Repentance simply means coming back to God. It's God telling us, come to me. Only in me you will have life, a life that will never end a life that will last all through the ages of eternity while time is time. This is a beautiful exchange. What a trade, brothers and sisters. But for God, it cost him everything. He emptied heaven. Jesus Christ is the creator of the universe, brothers and sisters. He created you and me in Adam. I am Adam, you are Adam. One time I was looking at this, the scale of the universe. From the smallest particle, microscopic, to the galactic elements of the universe and the galaxy. Can you imagine how God, how big, how huge God is? Perhaps, I don't know, God does, Scripture does not say, but there's a most likelihood possibility that God is greater than his creation. In fact, he is greater than his creation. He's so great, and yet he became so insignificant, reducing himself to the level 
of you and me because of his desire to bring each and every one of us to that heavenly place he has prepared for us before the foundation of the world. So the Holy Spirit is pleading with us, the comforter, the promised one, come to me, is the invitation. This is for each and every one of us. God loves us so much that he didn't leave any stone unturned. He was triumphant at the cross. And his triumph, in his victory, he is giving to each and every one of us. He loves us with a love that will never end. May we contemplate on the magnitude of this kind of love. And my prayer is that tonight, while we may be grieving, yet today if we hear his voice, let us open our hearts because he wants to come into our hearts and find his dwelling there, never to leave you. God is a God who promised never to leave us, not forsake us. And when he makes a promise, it is sure. May we not find ourselves leaving God or turning our back against God, but instead find ourselves speaking the same words Peter spoke when he said, Lord, to whom shall we go, O Lord? You have the word of eternal life. So brothers and sisters, I leave you with this wonderful gospel story of Jesus Christ, the God who became man. And his humanity, he will retain forever because he is Emmanuel, God with us. Because when he returns together with the saints of the Most High in this place where he will make new, when there will be no more nights, no more pains, no more tears, no more sorrows, and no more death, he wants that you and me be there, a place of bliss, 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 brothers and sisters for you and for me. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. This is my pleading. And I plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Elder Don, for that inspiring message. Uh, it comforted each and every one. And it is true that uh, we, be, we will experience death. But the only one that could um, give us light back again is the only one, the only begotten Son of God. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen him alone. Thank you very much, Elder Don. And now, um, as we are nearing to the end of our program, we will have uh, Sister uh, Remy Villanueva um, in celebration of life. Uh, she'll be uh, giving a, uh, um, uh, what is this, tribute to uh, Sister Amy, and we'll be followed by uh, Sister Belinda Villaruel Abanila. Okay, Sister Remy, whenever you are ready, please. Thank you, Brother Yell, and thank you, Kuya Piper, for a very uh, inspiring message of hope. I cannot allow this moment to pass without sharing my experience with Amy. Amy will be greatly missed with her unique personalities. She is a great, thoughtful sister in law to me. 
every time we visit Masbate, I will never miss eating lato. Okay, those of you who don't know lato, lato is a seaweed with like, with small, it's, it's like a small grapes. And when you eat it, you know, it burst into your mouth, which is so delicious, which is one of my favorites. And burau, Indian mackerel, which is Effie's favorite. I never miss eating them because she always have them available on the table ready to eat when we're there. One time she asked Gwena to buy me lots of lato so I can take them to Quezon. And I forgot it because we're so busy packing and all that. And then I forgot it in the refrigerator when we left. I felt so bad that she made the efforts to make sure that I have lato to enjoy in Quezon. But when I spoke to her on the phone, she said, that's okay. You'll have them again when you come back. I cannot forget her hospitality. Whenever she find out, finds out from Epi that we're coming to visit Masbate, this is after 2014, because before 2014, we always stay with Beck. That's why um, Bar Felix um, always stays with Beck with us. And she always tell Epi, Prayem, Prayem, come stay with us. And I like the way she calls Epi Prayem. You know, she has that special intonation to call Epi Prayem. Several times we have other people, which includes families, friends, and missionaries who join us to go to Masbate, she would let our guests use their apartment free of charge. We would offer her some amount, amount to, to cover water and electricity bills, but she will not accept a penny. She has a special sense of humor that I never expected from a doctor who is so busy with, you know, lots of responsibilities within the community. And, you know, she always looks serious. But, you know, she would tell jokes with a serious face. And then at the end of her joke, we, we would all laugh. I enjoyed seeing her laughs with her eyes almost closing with a big grin. I will always remember that. I can vividly see it all the time. Ami is a giving person. She knows that Epi, who is Prime, Prime, is interested in preserving their ancestral home. She was the one who got it. Ami was the one who got it. But she willingly switched, you know, this house for Epi to have it, for Prime to have it, because he, she knows that Epi is very interested in preserving it. So Ami will be greatly missed, and we thank God for the promised hope that we will see her again in the resurrection morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sister Belinda, whenever you are ready, Paul. I'm on? Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, can you use? Can you hear? No. Yes, we can. Oh, oh, yeah, there's oh, oh. mute. You can hear you. You hear me? Yes, David, we can hear you. Okay. Here are a lot of history with me. Thank you. I'm going to tell you Ami has a point of view. Uh, I'm the four scribal links. You're logging, David. Um, you I think your internet is a little slow. We cannot hear you, look, hear you clearly. Can you hear us? Yeah, can you speak again? Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear, but it's cutting off. Oh, you can try again. Okay, Derek, okay, Derek, maybe you can use a cell phone or something with the same number.
Okay, while they're working on the sound, we will um, welcome whoever uh, wants to say something. Um, can you hear it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Can you try again, Derek? Go ahead. Try again. Yeah, I think it's better. It's on? Yeah, your, your sound is better. Hear me now? Hear me now? Yes, yes, but uh, put a headset on the other one. I lower the volume of the other one because it's echoing. Yeah. Lower the volume of the other one. Better. Or put a headset so we don't hear the echo. Okay? Yes, it's better. It's echo. It's better no, now, no more, David. No more. no more echo. Okay. Back now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We hear a lot of nice trip for Ami. And we'd like to thank you very much. I'm going to tell you about Ami, uh, six point of view. Ami, the fourth of the seven siblings and the smartest. Our father was an engineer and on his uh, construction projects, Ami, or young age, like grade school or high school, was only his assistant on computing structural and surveying plans. But then the calculator was not yet invented. So computations are done manually. She loved it. She enjoyed it. It's not work for her. Her first choice of profession is to be an engineer. But her father doesn't want it because he said it's a man's job. She became a physician. Close to her retirement as a medical doctor, she planned and built apartments. Mm -hmm. She was good at it. Since we are not physically in Masbati, she also helped us and supervised when we build our own. I think she feels accomplished as an engineer, as it is her dream profession. Like her mother, she is just quiet and observant. She likes to host, visit, hang out with family, even extended family and friends. When our mother was still alive, she made sure that she is here with her to celebrate mama's birthday. Um, before Ephraim knows how to play piano, it is Amis Piano's music that we were listening at home and at church. Okay, uh, we grew up in Masbati with no electricity. So after dinner, we just go to bed. Our house has four bedrooms upstairs with lots of extended family living with us. And if you talk loud, you can hear each other, even if you're in different rooms. <laughs> Ami has this game, mental math. He's, she's good at that. While we're not yet sleepy, she will say, give a quick answer to Four times three plus eight minus two divided by six, and everybody will have to answer. Or who answer first will be the first one to give the next question. We do this until we exhaust our brain and go to sleep. Um, when I started college, Mama, most of the time, is already here in America. Ami and I, among the siblings, are in Manila. 
She is doing her internal medicine residency in Manila Sanitarium. And then if I crave to eat vegetarian food, I just visit her there and we eat in the cafeteria. Yeah. Um, on her day off, she would pick me up in the dorm and we go to Quiapo to shop and eat our favorite restaurant's food. After her residency, she left for New York. And after my school, I also moved to America. She oriented me of New York. We walked 40 blocks in Manhattan with stairs and subways. Well, I just arrived from the Philippines with those fancy shoes that's not good for walking, so I got blisters. She said, this is life in New York. Yeah. And then uh, my first job, she applied for my first job in New York. Uh, while I was working, my boss noticed and said, you talk a lot on the phone, but you are so quiet here. Well, I'm in America, so I still have to press my sentence before I say it. I did not tell my boss that he interviewed my sister, Ami, when I was applying. Recently, while I keep going back to Masbate for vacation, she makes sure that I am very comfortable and all my memories in Masbate, food, activities, and places to go are achieved. Ami was very blessed. And she shares it. She, um, she left this earth quietly, not bothering or disturbing anybody. She will be greatly missed. I know that somebody we will meet again. I would like to take this opportunity to thank family and friends who helped, well wished, and pray for Ami. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you for. Ate Belinda. Um, before we close and we conclude this program with a prayer, a closing prayer by our pastor, Pastor Manny Hardiniano, I would like to have this privilege to say uh, a few words uh, to the uh, Maristela Villarreal Legaspi family. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend uh, my condolences and uh, our support, our family, to Brother Efe and uh, his family. I remember when uh, the last time that uh, Brother uh, Epi have told me about your tour in Japan, I can see in his face how happy Brother Epi was because uh, she said that, uh, Oh, Brad, nilibre ko na mga kapatid ko sa Japan. All expense paid, Brad. So, so I, I, I knew that uh, Brother Epi was so happy with that time being spent with you and knowing that uh, Brother Elpi is the only male in the family and the siblings are all women, you know, so I could imagine how spoiled Brother Epi is. And uh, at the time that we heard the news, I was standing right beside Brother Epi and I felt really the sorrow. She cannot, I mean, he cannot believe what he had heard at that time and I was, I would like to cry with him, but I, I, I decided not to, so that it would bring at least a little strength to him. But uh, to the family, though we do not know uh, Ate Ami, 
uh, but we know that uh, she is a very nice person, as everybody is saying about her. And uh, our condolences, the uh, the FISDAC, uh, the FESDAC, the uh, Plainfield, the family of uh, the Filipino district, we would like to convey our condolences and sympathy to you, to the family. Thank you very much, Paul. Now we would like to ask um, Pastor Manny Hardunyano uh, for our closing prayer. And then after this, uh, there will be an open uh, floor on which uh, who would, uh, ever would like to give their thoughts and their experience in regards with Dr. Ami. Thank you, Paul. Pastor? Good evening, everyone, uh, to everybody all over the world, those that have been attending and listening to this address. I just would like before giving you the closing prayer, I'd like to make sure that you understand why the whole district is behind Brother E.P. and the family, the bereaved family. Brother E.P. for his sisters is not only a fellow worker for us. He is one of us. He is a family. So much so that even the district pastor of this district goes to uh, the Philippines. Brother Ipi was with us. Anytime that we call Brother Ipi to uh, speak in our district, he is always available. With the note, after knowing today that uh, something happened uh, to her sister, I don't know if Ami was here during the time of the death of uh, their sister also a few years back. I know I was still new at that time when I spoke on a necrological service uh, in their house. Probably Ami was there. And uh, one thing more, we just would like to make sure that we understand why we pass away. It is a part of us and nobody stays here forever. All of us will be passing away. And so since it is a truth of which we cannot negate ourselves from, we have to entrust everything to the Lord. And we know that the message of assurance and the message of hope that we had tonight through Elder Don Piper, will be enough for, uh, for us, I mean, will be enough to remind us of that loving God who made himself available that all of us can find salvation in him. Brother E.P., uh, Elder E.P., Pastor E.P. has been a part of us. And uh, not only my family, but the whole family of the whole district, New Jersey Conference Filipino District, is one with your sorrow is one in your pain, and we are lifting you up in our prayer with the whole members of the clan, of your whole family. May the Lord comfort you during this time of uh, loss. God bless you. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Our great God, almighty heavenly Father, we humbly come before this moment we thank you for reminding us once more that we are just passers by in this world. And there is that place when there will be no more crying, no more death, no more sunset. We're happy that we have been reminding, reminded by the hope that in the coming of Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, we are assured that we will live forevermore. At this moment, we would like to pray in a very special way for our beloved brother E.P., his family, and the bereaved members of the bereaved family all over the world who is listening at this moment. I pray that you will comfort them including their friends who are bereaving as well, brothers and sisters who are one with them in uh, this sorrow, 
may it be that you will comfort each one of them, giving them the assurance that this is just a passing experience. Someday will come and that blessed hope will be ours. And that is when Jesus will come. Allow the message we hear tonight and the testimony of uh, uh, her sister uh, inspire us as we continue on waiting for that blessed hope. Thank you, Lord, for uniting us, not only in celebrations, but even in celebrations of like, la life like what we had tonight. Forgive us if we have fallen short of the standard. Bring us into eternity with you and you will come. And hold all our hands together as we wrestle against uh, anything that might happen that we may encounter in this life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, as of now, uh, if anyone would like or wish to say something in regards with uh, Dr. Amy, uh, you may do so. Hello, good evening. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Tita Rose Rada, formerly Villanueva. Amy was my classmate in uh, our senior academy class at Philippine Union College. You know, I thank God for social media and this technology that brings us all together at, um, at an occasion like this. It is sad because, you know, for a long time, several of us classmates have been trying to locate our other classmates. And Ami was one we have not heard from for a long time. And this Facebook is interesting. If you know a friend who knows a friend who knows a friend, somehow you will be able to locate uh, someone you haven't seen for a long time. And that's what happened with how I was able to get in touch with Ami. One time I was looking at the contacts of a friend, Danny Barizo, who is also in the East Coast. And I looked at some of the comments in one of his posting. I saw the name Ephraim Villaruel. I said, I wonder if he's related to Ami. So I clicked on Ephraim's profile and I looked at his friends and contacts, if I might see somebody who looks like Ami. Oh, I saw somebody. But her name was not Villaruel, it was Legaspi, but I was very sure that was Ami. So somehow I tried to contact her. I told Danny to tell Ephraim to contact Ami and that I wanted to get in touch with her. That was in June. Ephraim told Danny sometimes the uh, Wi-Fi connection is not so good in Masbate. I thought she was in New York, but I found out that she was in Masbate. But somehow the connection became clear and we had a face-to-face -face chat by FaceTime on Messenger with Ami. We have so many years to, to catch up on. It's 50 years plus since our graduation in Academy. So she told me she got married. They did not have children. She told me what happened after residency at Manila Sanitarium and Hospital. And she asked also what, about our other classmates. And I told her that our class uh, tries to meet every Sabbath afternoon. And we have a short devotional. We pray for each other and um, um, listen to any testimonies anything to get us caught up with each other since high school. And then I followed up that conversation with other texts, hoping she will answer also with a text. But no, she, I never got a text from her. I have another classmate who is very close to her because we are in academy, we're arranged by sitting arrangement. And we are Umali, Villanueva, Villaruel, the last three in the row. So we call ourselves XYZ because we are the last. And um, we were hoping to have a conference call, just the three of us. 
I became concerned when I heard about the earthquake in Masbate because I heard that somebody who is in the armed, armed services, I don't know if he was retired or what, was killed during the collapse of their home. So I said, I wonder how Ami is doing. So I tried to text her again and I did not receive any response. But all the while I keep praying that everything's okay with her and her family. And then I heard this news from another classmate who has a friend in the East Coast who knows Ephraim. And, and that's how we found out about Ami's passing. Oh, that news crushed all my hopes of ever trying to get to talk with her again. So I guess we will just continue our conversation under the tree of life in that heavenly home. I'm glad we have a, we serve a savior who promise us, promises us eternal life and who paid the price of our redemption. And we just look forward to seeing Ami again. We share our sympathies with her husband, with Ephraim and the rest of your surviving sisters, the rest of the members of the Villaruel, Maristela, and Legaspi clan. May God comfort all of you in the time of this, our collective sorrow of missing Ami. But we know we shall see her again. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Po. Is there anyone else would like to share? to develop the talent that when you hear me playing piano or whatever that comes from them the techniques the style or uh, a lot of things of course it comes from the lord but anyway especially that the the music the entertainer that's from from ami and ami is a silent supporter of the ministry that god has entrusted us and she doesn't want anything when I go to the Philippines that she will not support or anything that she doesn't know so that she can contribute or in anything. And she is the one who um, takes care of us if we are in the Philippines, especially in, in Masbate. So and on behalf of our family, from Beck, Miriam, and Amisgan, uh, Elizabeth and Belinda, Thank you all for joining, for your support, for your prayer to Pastor Hardiniano and the whole district and all friends and relatives who are joining here and even in Facebook. Thank you all. God bless you all. And we love you all in the name of the Lord. Looking forward. That is very, very soon that we all come together in the full knowledge of Jesus Christ and we will meet him in the clouds of glory face to face. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you, Brother Ariel. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, brother. Happy. Okay, so that I, I think that concludes our uh, program for tonight. And may the Lord be with us, even in our sleep, that he will guard us so that in the following morning, we will have that uh, spiritual strength that we need to overcome whatever it is that we're going through every day. God bless, Paul, and good evening and good morning doon po sa Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po. We can hang out if you would like to.